Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, what is synesthesia? So synesthesia is a condition, not a mental health disorder, where the activation of one sense triggers the activation of another. So a lot of times we think of this as just two senses being involved, but more than two senses can be involved, and also another version of the same sense can be involved. This condition is considered irrepressible and involuntary. So it's a response to stimuli that a person cannot turn off. There are many subtypes of synesthesia, but the most common would be where letters produce colors. So B, for example, could be viewed as orange or five as blue. This is an example of one sense being activated in two different ways, the visual sense in this case. The next most common type is where sounds are seen as colors, shapes, or textures. Now, of course, there are a number of possible combinations with this condition, more so than just the two common types. You can take really any two senses or more than two senses and have them activate at the same time or one activating in response to the other, and that would be another subtype in theory of this condition. So there are a number of interesting facts and myths about synesthesia. We know that the associations that individuals make when they have this condition are amazingly consistent. They're not random and they don't seem to follow some sort of pattern where they change. So in that example used before where a B is seen as orange or number five is seen as blue, that would likely be consistent throughout somebody's life. We know that synesthesia tends to form early in life and it's not always one sense triggering another. There may be a bi-directional component for some individuals who have this condition, meaning they may see the color blue and think of a five in that example where normally they would see a five and see the color blue. Synesthesia affects about 4% of the population. It may have a genetic etiology, meaning it may be caused by genetics. There's also a learned behavior component that's being explored. There's also a number of myths when it comes to synesthesia. And one of the myths we hear a lot is that it doesn't exist. But we know from brain scans that there are differences in the brain structures between individuals who have this condition and those that do not. The differences are slight, but they are there. Another myth is that individuals with synesthesia have some sort of advantage, that this condition imparts an advantage. Specifically, we hear a memory advantage, sometimes an intellectual advantage. The evidence does not support that this is the case. There doesn't appear to be any differences in terms of intelligence or memory between people with this condition and without. Although there is some evidence to support that individuals with this condition may be more creative. Really, that's more of a personality trait as opposed to something like intelligence or memory. Interpretations of the best evidence that we have in regards to synesthesia suggest that it's mostly neutral. It doesn't seem to impart any advantage or come with any disadvantages in most instances. It seems to be neutral in relation to functioning. There's some evidence that suggests that individuals with the condition can use the condition to improve their memory. So they don't have a better memory typically to start with, as I mentioned, but they may use it to create additional associations because they have that additional sensing component. In terms of possible disadvantages, we see in the literature that sometimes it can interfere with reading, specifically when the numbers or letters come up as colors. And for some individuals with the condition, it can be distracting. But overall, as I mentioned, it tends to be neutral. And again, it affects 4% of the population, so it's fairly common. A lot of people who have synesthesia probably don't recognize they have the condition because it hasn't interfered with their life in any meaningful way. I hope you found this description of synesthesia to be interesting. Thanks for watching.